Start game now. The Jack Morris rookie card is back because once again we have another baseball game and today it's going to be real sports baseball for the Atari 2600. This is a copy I unboxed all the way in episode 2 with the bullet hole. That's right, it's the bullet hole copy. Totally dig that box art featuring a ton of guys playing baseball all at the same time and they all seem to be facing different directions. But oh well, let's go ahead and take real sports baseball, pop it into my Atari 7800 Pro system, and see how it plays today. Let's go to the game. Real Sports Baseball was published by Atari and carries a copyright year of 1982. It is a baseball game for one or two players. There are two teams, and according to the manual, they are the pink action figures and the yellow action figures. Action figures, huh? So let's make the pink team, Team Muscle, and the yellow team... Team Cyclone, based on the highly underrated friend of He-Man. There are four game variations in Real Sports Baseball. A two-player mode where every pitch can be hit, a two-player mode where intentional balls cannot be hit, and single-player variations where the player either starts pitching or at bat. The game lasts nine full innings, no matter who's winning, but according to the manual, it can go into extra innings if there is a tie. When your team is pitching, you must program the pitch before pitching the ball. You program the pitch by moving the joystick. Move up for a fastball, left for a riser, right for a slider, and down for an intentional ball. Then you hold down the fire button and flick the joystick down to throw it. The three strikeable pitches can have a random effect as far as effectiveness goes against the computer, but when playing the computer, the intentional ball will never make the computer swing and will never be hittable when the computer throws one at you. Once the ball is hit, you'll be given control of a computer-selected fielder. If you hear a tone when the ball is hit, it is in the air, and positioning your fielder correctly can catch the ball for an out. Otherwise, it is a grounder and you will have to throw the ball to a base or run and take a base or runner to score an out. To throw the ball, you press the button to throw to the fielder the joystick is pointing to. Right for first base, up for second, left for third, down for home, or nowhere for the pitcher. And you must throw the ball to the pitcher before the next batter will come up. When batting, you aim the joystick while pressing the button to swing. Holding straight up will bunt up to the left or the right will aim grounders in those directions. Holding down right or down left or straight down will hit fly balls that if they are not caught by anyone will turn to home runs when they hit the top of the screen every time. This makes hitting home runs the easiest at any baseball game I've ever played. Just hold down when batting and you have a decent shot at getting a home run. However, whenever you make a hit, even a home run, you must tell your player to run for every plate he touches. By holding the button down and pressing right, he will continue to run forward until you release everything. By doing the same but pressing left will make him return to the previous base. Oh, and sometimes the computer is pretty dumb. Not only does he seem to throw the ball around to random bases after fielding it, but there were many times when I bunted, I waited at home, the computer tossed the ball around a few times without taking first, and I was able to start running late and make it all around the bases without the computer stopping me for an inside the park home run. If you have a runner on, you can pretty easily steal during a nap bat by pressing the controller towards the base your runner is on to take control of him, and then pressing the button and right on the joystick to steal. If done at the right time, you will run extra fast, but no matter what, I found the computer easy to steal upon, even being able to steal home at virtual ease. It's almost like the catcher doesn't want to tag people heading to home out. This also led to frustration batting as often I would take control of a runner instead of a batter when trying to aim my hits, but despite this, I was easily able to score on the computer. Graphically speaking, it looks okay for a 2600 baseball game with all the fielders on field and a diamond to run around. However, I found this sounds pretty irritating, especially when a strike or an out was called. I know it's not a good thing to happen in the game, but the sound seemed very harsh and unpleasing to the ear. And being a baseball game, this is a family-friendly game. On eBay, loose copies typically go for $4 or less. Complete copies were going for $6 and under, and new copies were selling for $10 and under as well. And as always, those prices include your shipping. So what did I think of real sports baseball? Well, 
I could see hints of the potential, but in the end it felt like an incomplete and not entertaining game. I found it way too easy to score on the computer. I hated the sound, and the game takes way too long, thanks to the computer throwing the ball around too much in between batters and having to command your batters to always run after hitting the ball. A game can take 20 to 30 minutes, and halfway through the game, I just wanted it to end. And it's somewhat complicated to play, making it not friendly for a two-player game with someone who's not familiar with it. I also thought it felt counterintuitive. I wanted to press up when hitting fly balls instead of down, and I wanted to press down to throw fastballs instead of pressing up. So where am I going to rank it? Pretty low. I really have no desire to play this game again. So I'm going to look near the bottom. I don't think it deserves to be the worst ranked game. Tax Avoiders worked way too hard for that. But you know what? I think I'd rather play the awful Firefly with the sound off than this. So I'm going to make it my new number 38 ranked game. Your mileage may vary, but I recommend Real Sports Baseball to collectors only. And honestly, I'd much rather play 1978's Home Run over this game any day. Real Sports Baseball, it just feels broke. If you enjoy retro related videos, would you please click the like and subscribe buttons. Also be sure to check out some of my many other videos covering Atari, Sega, Nintendo and more. With over 150 videos now posted, there's sure to be something for just about any retro fan. Thank you guys for giving me a little part of your day and I look forward to seeing you next time on the next episode of the Nosewear Gamer. Take care.